to beat all the bosses in this game. I'm gonna have to become the strongest pixel man I can be, building cities, raiding dungeons and so much more. Will I be able to beat the final boss which people claim to be literally impossible and how far can I get in this crazy game? Let's find out. Welcome to 100 days in SS. I spawned into this game with zero knowledge, a blank canvas in a world of uncertainty. But armed with my survival game experience, I knew where to begin. The basics. My crafting menu revealed a workbench and I made a pickaxe to mine some stone. Okay, here we have things to craft a house so we can put a wood floor. There we go. And we're gonna need more trees again, so let's do that. I wasn't sure if there were monsters coming at night time, but I'd find that out pretty soon. I crafted a forge and laid out the walls for my refuge to protect me from whatever is gonna come at night. There we go, we're gonna have an entrance here. I placed down the door and it was already night time. And I wasn't wrong about the monsters because zombies were starting to surround my base. My hunger bar was starting to go down and I needed a campfire to cook food, but I was missing stone to craft that. So I crafted a ladder and went underground to get stone. Okay, we're in the caves now. Okay, hello. Hello. I don't like this. Woo, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I mined some stone and collected the loot that I found. Little did I know, coins are pretty useful in this game, so I got lucky. I found my first orb, which was copper, and went up to cook because I was getting hungry. Oh, we need more wood. Let's get that. Hopefully, we don't get attacked. Oh, yeah, we're getting attacked. Boom. Amazing. I placed down the campfire and finally cooked some yummy meat. Hello. What are you doing here? Okay, what can I buy? Oh, iron bow. I'll take it. I also could already pay this guy to live in my village. But since I don't have one, I decided to start working on that settlement immediately. Settlement flag, okay. Gold bars. We need gold bars? Jeez. Descending once again into the depths, the path to settlement was far from easy. Every cave had its own dangers, challenging me to defeat monsters blocking my progress. Yet, in the darkness, I found treasures, copper and even some gold, which was essential to start my village. Everything was going well, until... Okay. Oh, that is uncomfortable. That is uncomfortable, boys. <laughs> Let's get these goblins. And we're gonna slowly get the spider, if I can. Okay, I can. Hey, 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 where are you going? Okay, there's more spiders. Uh, I don't like it. They can't pass through these walls, I think. So I'm gonna abuse this. Not good. Not good. No. He's trying to get me stuck. Okay, he didn't do any damage though. Boom. That guy's dead. Oh, he's spitting. Damn. Thankfully, I abused the cave walls and was able to kill them all. Unfortunately, there was no reward or nothing. Also, there was this little guy carrying gold, but he was too fast for me to catch or kill. Anyway, I found a massive gold vein and I went up thinking that I had enough. I smelted what I found, made some boots from spider glands and killed some cows for leather. I made some leather armor. We can craft bullets. Are we gonna be able to craft weapons? <laughs> no way. That would be freaking lit. And realized that I needed more gold for that settlement flag. So, knowing only one way to get that, I went back into the caves. Huh. Oh, that's a trap. Attack speed potion. Damn. Iron bomb. Damn, we have a lot of stuff. Let's try and light this up. Okay, a lot of guys here. Okay, I'm not taking any damage. Very good. Uh, we have some... I think that's iron right there, which I'll gladly take. I think I can craft more weapons with that. We collected a bunch of that and I realized that maybe it wasn't as rare as I expected. I found one more chest inside the wall and it had wheat seeds. That means farming is an aspect in this game too. I love it. I explored a lot, but still couldn't find any gold. So I used a recall scroll I found to teleport home and decided to do some work on my house. Okay, copper, smelt. There we go. We have a lot of iron ore. Let's smelt it as well. And I think we can make a farm now, which I totally want to do. So let's go ahead and craft some fences. We need a chest too. Let's store our useful items here. Iron. Oh my god, we can craft iron tools and iron armor and stuff. We just need to figure out with what are we going to craft that. Iron anvil. Okay, we need an anvil then. Let's put it down. I think we have just enough. Yeah, let's do an iron sword. Woo! I'm freaking sick. Since I found those seeds, I built a fenced area and crafted some farm plots. Those were surprisingly costly, so I only could craft a few. But a start is better than no start. With that wheat in place, I crafted some copper armor and went down once more to find that gold for that settlement flag. Oh no, let's try exploding. Oof. Okay. Hey, that's pretty nice. Oh, we have another super secret dungeon. Okay, let's see. More bombs. Very good. Shine belt. 
Oh yeah, lights up the area around you. Very good. I'll take that. Swinging my new iron sword, I kept looking for gold. I just knew that having people in your village must progress you a lot, so I had my eyes set on that. I found some cabbage seeds and some other useful stuff, and my inventory was already full. So I went up again for a short while to get some materials. We have an oak bed, which I'm not gonna use probably, because I don't want that time to go by too fast. Can we craft more farm plots? Oh, we need logs, okay. Our new seeds, tomatoes and cabbage. Oh, we have a lot of cabbage seeds. I made the farm and not long after that, I was back in the caves again. Oh, I got a gold bar. Yes. Thankfully, I finally had enough gold, so I left the cave and crafted the settlement flag for our village. I also crafted a carpentry station so I could craft furniture now. Ooh, we can make a beautiful house. I played with the flag a little bit and it's basically a tool where you can make slaves do jobs for you. I also realized that my house was getting really cramped, so I set out to build myself a bigger house. I had a ton of stone already from the bombs in the cave and I only needed wood for the walls. I laid out the floor. and build those walls. I furnished that bad boy and a fisherman came to our base. What's up, man? What do you sell? He's a fisherman, should I take him? I mean, I would take a fisherman, but I want him. Oh, he can do a lot of stuff. Okay. And just like that, we had our first settler. Now having settlers isn't that simple. I checked his stats and he was super unhappy because he didn't have a bed. So I built it and he was kinda happy. I selected a forest for him to cut down, but he was sleeping instead. Nice. Anyway, I cooked some food and since there's a bunch of bosses in this game I have to defeat, I decided to upgrade my gear. So down into the dungeons again. In the mines, I got a nice amount of iron and almost died from a spider. Oh no. Oh no, he's close. Ooh. Okay. I had an iron sword, so zombies weren't a problem anymore. But the deeper I went, the worse it got. Vampire? Okay, a new guy? Hey, 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 my guy. Whew. Batwing. I wonder what we can make from that. Okay, something behind that wall right there. Ooh. Wow. Right behind that wall was a graveyard with a bunch of vampires. I wasn't sure if I should go or not, but I decided to come back when I'm a bit stronger. But soon I realized that there wasn't much else to go, cause vampire caves were everywhere. So with my pockets filled with iron and copper, I went up to smelt everything for new gear. I went to check up on our settler and... And is he giving us wood? Take items, I'll take those. Oh, he can join my adventure party too? Damn, this game is insane! I took a quest from an old guy that was following us from the start, crafted an iron helmet and an axe, and I went down to do that quest, but I found some gold instead. I went up to cook that chisel and found a traveling merchant in my house. Wrapping paper, Christmas tree, imported cow and imported sheep. I'll take a Christmas tree, thank you. I'll take a two cows and two sheep. 100%. Yeah, that's that's enough. I bought the animals with the intention to breed them in the future. And of course, because it's the holiday season, I couldn't resist bringing a touch of festivity into my settlement. I also put some furniture too. I noticed that I had a goblin ring in my inventory, which was my quest. Completing the quest gave me only 38 coins, so I'm never doing a quest again. I set my sights on an alchemy table. To craft it, I need glass bottles. And for that, I required sand. I set the sand to cook, got the wood my settler collected, and built the alchemy table. Sooner or later, I'm I'm gonna have to begin fighting bosses, so my gear had to be great. So I decided to go down once more, but this time I'm gonna ask the fisherman to join my party. So I made him some copper armor and we went down together. Yeah, he's following us. Hell yeah. Ooh, scrolling zombie? What the hell is this guy? Okay. Um, let's try to use this. Oh, we have gold there. I'm taking that. Let's mine this up. Woo! Protect me, my guy. Let's go. Crazy. Bombing everything was super satisfying. Not only it saved time, it also provided us with a bunch of stone for later. I raided another dungeon with a bunch of coins and everything was going super well. Until... Our settler died from a zombie arrow. 
Damn, with my weak gear, I couldn't help protect the ones close to me. I had to make sure that that was never gonna happen again. So I kept collecting a lot of iron. I found a loot chest with a boss spawn item inside and was excited for it. And I think it was just about time to beat them. Battling my way back, I found the ladder and went home. I was surprised by some good news. Another fisherman has visited my house. So I paid him 300 coins and we had our settler back. After putting my ores to smelt, I made a golden sword and spawned the boss from the chest. Okay, that guy looks dangerous. Oh yeah, I'm probably gonna die here. Yeah, possibly. I should have taken a guy with me. Okay, we do have a potion just in case. Let's drink that. Okay, let's drink a potion. Please, drink that freaking potion. Okay, I cannot. Deadly. Potion, boom. Let's go. Damn, this is gonna be difficult, isn't it? Oof. Okay, I'm definitely dying. Let's go back home. Glad I died. Yeah, maybe I wasn't ready for him just yet. I gave my settler my old iron sword, harvested my crops, and replanted some more seeds. To make food from my crops, I had to make a cooking pot. So I cut down some trees and cooking pot there was. On day 12, craving a breath of fresh air, I finally emerged from the confines of my shelter. Days of huddling inside had kept me oblivious to the beauty of my island. On my way, I noticed a guy called Michael the Hunter, and he told me that if I want him to join my village, I'm gonna have to pay him 27 leather. So I continued exploring and killed all the animals in my sight. 21 wool, not too much, but I think we can hire this guy now. Accept. Oh! Very nice. Back at the settlement, I discovered that the new settler had found their way to our land. However, the joy was short-lived, as upon my return, I found this newcomer on strike. Because yes, he needed a bed as well. All the villagers have happiness meters, and one of the main things were their sleeping situation. Not only that, if they are cramped in one room, they become unhappy too. So I had to begin building separate houses for all my settlers. There's a pretty big space here. I built the floor and noticed another guy in my house. This time it was a miner, so I gave him some gold coins and he was mine forever. I put one more bed and the room looked like Santa Claus workshop. I made some walls and went to finish the house. Now let's make a bed. We're out of wool it seems, okay. That's fine, we can remove one from here I'm pretty sure. And let's make some furniture for him as well. Because his happiness depends on that somehow. Oh wow. That's big. <laughs> Boom, very nice. I also decided that the villager living in the new house is gonna be our farmer. So naturally, I made a farm in his backyard. Amazing. I built a fence around the farm and went to our new village miner to send him to the mines to get us some gold. Later I noticed that we need to grow flowers to make potions, so I did that. And for the whole day, I looked at crafting recipes. The miner came back and... Hello. Oof. We got a lot of gold. Bro, settlers are OP. Suddenly, I saw a text pop up that raiders were arriving at my base. Jordan the guard, maybe we can hire him and he'll help us. Let's see. Hello, Jordan. I guess we can buy him whatever. And where are those raiders? Oh, there they are. Okay, let's get it. Oh my God, there's a lot of them. All right, let's get it. Oh, this is pretty easy actually. Well, maybe not super easy but it's fine would be nice if my guys could help us but i guess they don't wanna Ooh, okay we almost died there okay our guard is helping us good damn there's a lot of them holy crap the guard is doing some work i'm glad i hired that guy Woo, raid has been defeated, let's go. That was our first raid with many more to come. I rewarded my guard with a Christmas hat. It might not boost their combat skills, but hey, everyone deserves a festive touch, no? The demands of my settlement continue to grow, and it seemed that my guard wasn't content with just a hat. He also wanted a bed, so I embarked on a new construction project, which was building another house. I didn't have wool for a bed though, so I made a cage to breed some sheep I bought earlier. Two cows and two sheep, exactly like Minecraft. I took some wheat I grew and unsurprisingly I fed them. After that, I tried automating the process, but my peasant villagers couldn't do that. I needed a special settler called Animal Keeper, which I'll keep my eyes out to find. I expanded my farm, crafted some shears, and actually got enough wool to bed my guard. Finally, I got the guard to join my party. 
Eager for a change of scenery, I ventured out to explore neighboring islands. And let's see what we can get there. I know there's a snowy biome, all sorts of biomes. Yes, northeast. Boom. And we have some sheep. Let's go. Let's take those shears. I'm not gonna kill these. There you go. Come here, sheepies. One discovery stood out. A charming village. Intriguingly, I learned that I could enlist villagers from there to join my settlement. However, with limited housing, I opted to postpone recruitment for now. I stumbled upon a mage offering enchantments, revealing the multitude of available classes in this game. Determined to make the most of my visit, I delved into their mines, liberating some gold and snatching up some valuable seeds from their farms. Back home, I streamlined animal care crafting a feed through, bidding farewell to manual feeding. The acquired seeds found a new home in my fields and apparently sunflowers make health potions so i was glad i found that i kind of got hooked on the settlement mechanic so on day 17 i built a house with two rooms and i also furnished my own house a bit on day 18 i understood how to automate my settlers basically you can make them take and put stuff in your chest complicated but i took care of it i had to get ready to finally beat the first boss so i made a golden bow crafted some healing potions and with my guard by my side, I went to get even stronger gear. Let's blow this hole and let's see what we can get here. Okay, well, I'm kind of dying here. Let's make sure we're good. Okay, let's try to kill that guy who carries stuff. What does he carry? Mm. Damn. Unlucky, he still escaped. It's impossible to catch, guys. Armed with newfound strengths, I conquered the vampires and dwelt into the dungeons. The underground labyrinth revealed a treasure trove of resources. Gleaming gold ores, an abundance of iron, and numerous treasure chests brimming with valuable items. Among the discoveries were precious seeds, explosive bombs, and a variety of other treasures that promised to increase my chances to beat the boss. With my pockets filled, I went up, smelted everything I found, and got ready to try the boss again. Maybe we can try to get that guy with us as well okay both of them are in my party let's spawn this freaker this should be easy no damn all right not in my house mister damn he's in my house let's watch our health we have a potion okay let's use that potion right now i'm kind of dying here Oof. okay i'm very low uh let's use the potion okay can you attack that guy, please? Oh, it's daytime and he escaped? Ah, oh. Freaking unlucky. The boss despawned because of daytime. But if that didn't happen, I think I would have killed him. I worked on automating my villagers, making meals, crafted some health potions, harvested some wool, and when it got dark, I tried the boss again. Let's spawn the freaker again. And let's get it. I'm getting hurt a tiny bit. Let's try. Oh, and let's try and avoid those shots. Ooh, let's dodge these. Our guy is protecting our house. Very nice. Yeah, let's get this guy. Okay, not good, not good. Ooh, at least our guys deal him damage. It's raining from the sky and it's very dangerous. Let's drink a potion. Come on, let's get it, boys. Whoo! Demonic bars. We got those. Ooh, hell yeah. Ooh, can be consumed permanently increases max health to 200 oh yeah let me eat that that was so freaking worth it he dropped some demonic bars and now i could craft a demonic workstation boom oh wow demonic bars can be crafted from gold I looked through the crafting menu and was excited to craft this new stuff. A farmer visited my village and he was exactly what I needed. So I hired him for 300 coins and made him look after the crops. My settlement was starting to do stuff automatically, so I decided to explore the map. I took my boat and sailed to a desert island nearby. The desert zombies were twice as strong as normal ones, but they did have pretty good gear so they weren't too big of a problem. I collected some cacti and some palm trees to bring home. And unfortunately, my guard wasn't as strong as me. It wasn't too safe at night time, so I decided to hold my explorations for a little later and came back home. I don't remember how, but I got a trinket which makes me go faster by pressing space, which was super OP and I used it throughout the whole 100 days. I also decided to improve my village by laying out a path that makes you go a bit faster. After that, I went to check out the snowy biome, which I hadn't seen yet. Let's see what we can get here. Penguins? Hmm. Blackberries. Alright. Why do penguins drop? Nothing. Alright. Polar bear. 
It's not attacking us. But it is super strong. Okay, I might die. Well, that's bad. Get out of here. Okay, he's focused on the hunter. The hunter is gonna die probably. Or not, maybe he is strong. Damn. All right, let me get that. Okay, it's night time again, so let's just move out of here. I got home, planted my new berry bushes, took a guy with me, and decided to beat the boss again. Those demonic bars were pretty nice, and I wanted some more of them. The boss was much easier, because I had double the health. And with those bars, I made a cool act looking sword. And being the nice man I am, I gave my old one to my villager. I opened the map and noticed that there was a dungeon entrance on an island far away. So I took my buddy and went to check it out. Oh, he wants to kill me. All right. Broken, stop with that. In the dungeon, I snagged some awesome furniture for my base. Call it resourceful redecorating. Facing off against the new wizard enemies was a real challenge, especially when they teamed up. Navigating through the dungeon, I faced hordes of enemies relying on my gaming prowess to survive. Unfortunately, my villager buddy wasn't skilled as me. Attempting a solo mission, I quickly grasped the impossibility of it. So with the threat looming large, I teleported back home, nearly escaping my death. The wizards that I was able to kill dropped some void shards, with which I crafted the wizard boss pawn item. I decked out my place with the acquired furnishings and whipped up some demonic tools. After that, I swam to a village nearby to finally get the animal keeper. There we go, we found the village. Right, that's the mage. Guard. Hmm. I couldn't find the animal keeper, but I did find an enchantment scroll. I enchanted my sword and went to find a different village. This time it was a desert village, and once again, they didn't have what I needed. I did find out a really useful piece of info though. Wait, do guards have more HP? Oh yeah, they do. I can hire this guy. I'm taking that guy. I explored some more and finally found an animal keeper. Unfortunately, for some reason, he wanted to stay there, so I used my scroll and went home. Back in my village, I gave a golden sword to my new guard and saw a message pop up. Oh, and raiders are coming. Okay. I gave my guy some potions and went to take care of it. Surprisingly, we made a great freaking team. I fertilized my crops and said to myself, Maybe let's buy more guards. That would be kind of dope. I also made some fertilizer pots so the farmer could make it automatically. And not gonna lie, our farm was starting to look amazing. On day 25, I bought some sunglasses and I was officially the coolest guy in town. I also milked some cows so we could make some better food like donuts. And I built an automatic storage room, which took a long time and I won't bore you with the details. Actually, it took so long that I spent the whole of day 26 automating everything as well. Okay, finally, I think, I think we cleared our... Freaking storage, jeez, that took ages. And on day 27, I checked my settlers' happiness and they were pissed that they had to share the room. So I expanded my base to build a separate room. I placed down a bed and some furniture along with it. I gave my guard an iron helmet, sent my miner to get some gold and went to try and beat the wizard boss now. As I approached the dungeon, I got more and more nervous. Last time, I barely escaped my death and I wasn't sure if this time was gonna be much different. But facing my fears, I entered. Okay, nice. Our guard is doing work, which I totally like. Wait, let's use those potions. Adventure party, let's give them these potions as well. With me and my team potioned up, we ran through the enemies. Not that it was very easy, but with two people by my side, I felt much more safe. I tried spawning the boss, but it seemed I needed to go deeper. So I did just that, venturing deeper and deeper, constantly facing enemies. And eventually, I did find a hole that probably led to the boss room. So, I entered. boss fight let's get it okay wow he's very strong i do not like it i'm taking way too much damage here it's freaking crazy i'm gonna have to use a bow on him okay the good thing is killing me so if i just dodge my guy should take care of him okay he's randomly stuck oh wow new attacks from him Hopefully I don't die. Looks like I'm gonna die. I died. We had him on 24% health. That was super close. Thankfully, my party members survived and were home. Considering how close I was to beating the wizard boss, I wanted to upgrade my gear a tiny bit and go back. So I went into the mines once again to find some ores. I found a lot of iron, copper, and even gold. Weirdly, I even found a miner down there and hired him to join my settlement. I actually soon realized that these caves were really easy now. My gear and my partner were great, so it's all thanks to that. After two whole days in the mines, I came home and smelted it all. 
all. I made some golden armor for myself and also collected some gold from the miner I sent down earlier. And I sent him again once more. Why not? I gave the fisherman some new equipment and went to try and beat the boss again. The dungeon has been cleared out by me before, so the walk there was pretty safe. I drank some potions and went down to get my revenge. Deep within the dungeon, the showdown began. The chamber pulsated with magical energy as I faced off against the towering wizard. Spells collided and the room became a battleground. My demonic tools and stolen treasures held their ground, but a surge of dark energy shifted the tide. In a heart-wrenching turn, the wizard unleashed a final, overwhelming attack. Despite my best efforts, I fell, marking a bitter defeat. In survival, victories are hard-earned, and defeats are inevitable. But I knew that the wizard only got lucky, so I immediately took my guards once again and went down to meet the freaker once more. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, the wizard was on 7% HP and I lost again. Bruh. So I went again, cause giving up is not in my vocabulary. But I died again. I don't learn, do I? Not only that, my guards died as well. This was a bitter lesson I had to learn. This time, I simply went to get my items that I lost and TP'd home. Don't worry, defeat wasn't an option. I'm never late. I'm determined and I vowed the wizard would fall. I had a plan to build an army, so I immediately went into action. First, I made some demonic armor, got a boat and went to visit a neighboring village to buy some guards. But I quickly realized that to do that, I needed potions. So back home, I took all the ones I had and finally bought one guard. I swam to a different village, bought a second and even a third. Back home, I was ready to get my revenge, but of course, we didn't have enough rooms to bed them all, so I had to get to building. I did that and my guards were finally happy. Next, I needed more health potions for my guards, so I expand my farm, placed more farm plots and planted more sunflowers. I also used fertilizer to speed it up. I furnished a new room and hired another villager to help us make food to fuel the guards. Gearing up for the final showdown, I armed my guards with superior armor and weapons. Patience became my ally as I watched the sunflowers grow, crafting health potions as they blossomed. Anticipating future battles, I expanded the sunflower farm, ensuring a steady potion supply. And finally, I went to take down that wizard boss once and for all. Confident and well prepared, I entered the dungeon with my formidable team of free guards. Decked in new armor, armed with potent potions and powerful swords, victory was within grasp. The battle commenced, a new strategy in play. I let my guards take care of the freaker while I just dodged his attacks. And not surprisingly, my genius strategy actually worked. The battle, initially easy, took a challenging turn. My health dwindled, but so did the wizards. Determined, I pressed on, knowing victory was within reach. The wizard neared death. Every strike brought us closer and closer to the edge. The tension hung in the air, but with one final decisive blow, the wizard fell. He dropped a weapon called Void Missile, and I guess it was pretty nice. Celebrating my victory, I explored the dungeon for some loot, found some alright treasure, and victorious, finally got home. Once back, I was happy to see that my sunflowers have grown. I played with the automatic system some more, and decided to expand my house more to make my army even bigger. After that, to make my potions, I had to cook some glass, so I did that and made a cheese press, which I never used through the whole gameplay. Later, I crafted a pirate island map. Boom. Pirate village discovered. Okay, we're gonna do that. We'll see what we can get from there. I woke up my guard to join my party, and with five guards on my team, I went to raid these freakers. And on day 37, I was already on their land. Damn. Alright, let's get it, boys. Damn, they have weapons and stuff. And the pirate captain has a lot of health. Okay. Oh, he has a cannon. Wow. Don't die, guards, please. Whoa. Okay, we need a potion again. Okay, not too easy, not too easy at all. No. Holy crap. This is gonna be super difficult. I, oh my god, I'm, I'm dying. Okay. We need to TP home. We need to TP home. No, 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 we're not doing this. <laughs> we almost died. Good. I had a new challenge to look forward to. But for now, to improve my settlement even more, I wanted to get the animal keeper in my village. So I visited a neighboring village once again, but couldn't find him there. So I visited another village, and finally, there he was. Villagers, villagers, villagers. Animal keeper, hello. Leather. Okay. That shouldn't be too hard. Let's get that leather then. Oh, come on. They're coming to my base. Let's TP home then. Alright, this should be easy. Let's go ahead and kill some cows. Give me that leather, guys. 
the raid wasn't a problem. I don't know if it's gonna increase in difficulty or not, but for now, it was a breeze. With the raid defeated, I took all the leather I had and went back to that village. Okay, we found the animal keeper. Let's go. He's in our base. By now, I've almost spent all my coins. And since we almost cleared out our whole underground mine, I visited another village and went straight to their underground. Okay, we do have bombs. Let's use those. There we go. I got a bunch of ores and got as many coins as I could. On the surface, I also collected some mushrooms which I've never seen before. Later, I also explored the swamp biome which had slimes that don't drop anything. <clears throat> Lazy game developing. But after that, I did make a shocking discovery. I put down the ladder and went down. And to my surprise, every single biome has different mines with different enemies and ores. I also found different seeds, which were chili pepper seeds and potatoes. This got me excited. With my inventory filled with new stuff, I TP'd home, built my ores and made my animal keeper, well, keep animals. I also expanded my farm even more for those new seeds and realized that there's a bunch of food in this game and I love it. On day 39 I kept expanding my farm because my village was getting kinda big and I needed to feed my people. I also needed an insane amount of sunflowers. Once I built that, I cleaned everything up and replanted it to look more beautiful. I did a small square of wheat, a decent light of sugar beets and all the small stuff like tomatoes, cabbage and potatoes. I set the farmer to work on it and it was done. On day 40 I automated some more food recipes and took my guards to join me on a trip back to the swamp mines. I wanted to explore it properly now and I was sure that there was stuff I missed and I wanted it all. <laughs> well, this is crammed. And I was right about that because right after I entered I found some new plants called thorns. I collected some ores and found a new enemy called swamp shooter. I also found a weird item and when I used it, this happened. Okay, wow. Uh, I think I need a TP, yep. <laughs> Yo, why am I so weak? That's BS. Pretty unfair. Yeah, we discovered another boss. And with that came the realization that I'm still very weak. I didn't really want to go back there. So I decided to visit the winter biome and try going underground there. And let's go down. Oh yeah, we should get Ooh, some more stuff here. Is that copper? Yep, that's copper. Hmm, new ores. Okay, let's get these. Frost shard. All right. I think that's pretty valuable, actually. I think it was actually better than gold. I kept venturing deeper, collecting coins and ores. Everything was going well until... Queen spider. Okay, we have a boss fight. Oof, that is disgusting. Oof. God damn. Okay, we're slowly gonna kill him. This isn't too difficult. I think we can handle the Queen Spider. Uh, I need a mana potion. Do I have that? Yes. Okay, I have to evade this guy. Or else he's gonna kill me. Another Queen Spider? Holy crap. Okay, let's not die. Hopefully we can TP out of here if something happens. Yeah, let's TP. <sighs> Damn, I keep failing to get those bosses. I would have handled one, but two was just a bit too much. I looked at what those frost shards could do and they were indeed better than gold, but a little bit worse than my current demonic armor. So not gonna use that right now. That plant I collected made some potions though, which was nice. And I made a demonic sword because I didn't really like the weapon the wizard dropped. With my team, I came back to the snowy biome caves again because there was more stuff to find. When I entered, I immediately found the spider boss again. So I triggered that freaker and tried killing him. Okay, let's get that spider. I'm ready. Okay, we're getting low. Let's watch out and try not to die. We should be alright, I think. Come on now. It's so low. We gotta get him. Get him, boys. Oh, I'm super low. There we go. We killed him. Whew. That was intense. What did we get? Spider charm? Okay, let's make sure we don't hit any more spider stuff. That's the third boss defeated successfully. I kept raiding the dungeon, collecting a bunch of common stuff and I TP'd home. As I kept getting richer and stronger, it was time for our next step. Now how do we kill the pirate? We have four guards. I think we should add a few more rooms. Grab some floors right here. Where are they at? Alright, we have that. I was take our potions there we go let's take all these and let's see if we can get any guards here okay guard hell yeah i'm buying that guy another guard here yes boom amazing now let's enchant our weapon maybe yep
Oh, come on. Minus 15 damage on our sword. Freak this guy. Back home, I collected my ninja stars from my chest that I collected in the caves. I didn't really use them before, but maybe against the pirate, it might be useful. I took my potions, gave stuff to my guards, and with six people on my team, I went to try and kill the pirate. Here's the pirate. Wait, I forgot to use this. Damn. Okay, our potions are in use. Now let's try and get this guy. Damn, he's good. Let's make sure to dodge his attacks and we should be good. Deal him damage, boys. Deal him damage. Okay, can we throw bombs at him? Ah, I'm kind of low. Drink that potion. Come on, boys. Deal him damage. And it's getting dark outside. Not good. Not good at all. I just need to make sure to dodge his attacks. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Whew. He's crazy. I need to dodge these attacks. God damn. Let's drink that potion. Boom. Only 10%. We got this. Ah, we definitely have this. It's in our bag already. Woo! We did it, we did it, we did it, we did it. He dropped a thing called Deep Ladder. I didn't know this at the moment, but that ladder allows us to go even deeper to the dungeons than before. It's gonna give us new ores, new bosses, and a lot of other stuff. I found a genie lamp in the chest, which makes a great weapon, and I also found the pirate sword, which deals great damage. The pirate base also had a ton of coins, so I took them all, and we even found a guy called Broken Pirate. He was peaceful, so I took him to my settlement for free. Beating this boss was really fruitful, and it was definitely worth it. Once I got home, I placed down the Deep Ladder, to see what the deep dungeons had to offer so let's go ahead and do that Woo. wow this is dark oh yeah this is very dark whoa skeletons and stuff damn i'll take this gold gladly what do we make from bones wow okay listen wait you know what i need is that potion where i can see everything there we go boom pumpkins okay travel scroll wow and some tongues and bars. We immediately found so much new stuff. A travel scroll allows us to TP anywhere we want, pumpkin seeds you already know, and tungsten and bars, which are so much better than gold. And it's not even the best ore in the game. Obsidian? Okay. Oh wait, I can't mine this out? I guess not. Alright. Tungs and ores. Whoa. Whoa. Let's try using the dynamite on it. There we go. And let's see. What can we make from obsidian? Cooking station. Oh, wow. Shield. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> this is great. I kept exploring and found some onion seeds and more tungsten ore. And this happened again. Oh, raiders are coming. Come on. While the raiders were getting ready, I planted my new seeds. And with my six guards, we went to meet them on the shore. It soon became clear to me that I was way too strong for those puzzle little humans. And they were dealt with within seconds. A random guard came into my base and I tried to kill him for fun. Hey, yo, 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 yo. Woo! That was crazy. I smelled my new tungsten ores and noticed that I was still missing quartz for a better crafting table. I turned off my recording and went to Google how to get quartz. And basically, I needed to visit the desert caves. I did, I collected it, and only then I noticed that I didn't start recording. So, yeah. Here we have it, the better crafting table. On day 45, I was getting really tired of my village. My farm was too small and my house just wasn't pretty at all. So I took a ton of stone for the floor and for the walls, I had a lot of logs, but I decided that I want some better looking wood. I had some palm tree saplings in my chest, which I thought looked pretty freaking nice. So I planted those and had to wait for it to grow. While waiting, I was looking for a spot to build my new village and I found a pretty nice plains biome. I placed a bunch of torches for when the night comes and picked a spot where I'm gonna build my main house brick floors hmm should i do it out of snowstone or sandstone actually would be great as well damn sandstone would be great i wanted to build a floor out of sandstone so i came home to check if i had any and i only had a tiny amount so i went back and crafting what little sandstone i had the floor of my future shelter took shape it looked promising though, a testament to the evolving landscape of my virtual world. Teleporting home, the next step awaited, gathering palm logs. Saplings were replaced with palm ones only, signaling a patient wait for nature to take its course. I needed some more sandstone, so I crafted a ladder and visited the desert. I cut down some more palm trees for saplings, and I actually got a nice amount. Okay, let's go down I think. Whoa, what the f*** is this? Damn, alright. I'm taking all this. Hell yeah. Damn, we'll get a lot of coins here. What is that? Ah! Uh, can we kill him or I wonder? Maybe not, maybe not, or maybe we will. Okay, this should be alright. Finally, I can basically solo a boss. 
Okay, maybe maybe this isn't too good actually. Uh, should I leave? Let's leave. That wasn't too bad. If I had my guards with me, I think I would have won. I went back down and as I expected, he was gone. I began placing bombs to get that stone and some ores on the side. Personally, bombs were one of the most satisfying parts of this game, so I was happy doing that. Once I had enough, I went up, collected some more bombs and planted all the saplings that I had. I later realized that I needed two workbenches, one for here and one for in our new village. Okay, I think we need one more of that workbench. Tungsten bars. Hmm, we don't have any more of those. Let's go down in the mines again, since we need these tungsten bars. And maybe we'll grow some trees in the meanwhile. Would be dope. There we go. Hey, yo. Oh, crap. I'm almost dead. I think I need more guards, actually. Yeah, let's grab some guards with us. Before I did that, I opened this chest and found a deep cave boss spawn item and some life guards, which are basically used to craft more hearts. Anyway, I got my guards and went down again. I found some tungsten, got some banana saplings. Deep caves were great. They were really difficult if you went alone, but if you had protection, it provided a bunch of ores. Life guards. Damn. Wow. Once home, I cooked that tungsten and used my life guards I found. Life elixir. Apparently increases max health by 10 up to 300. I'm taking that 100%. Boom. Check out our health. Oh, shit. we can craft even one more. Let's craft one more then. Yo, that's gonna be crazy. Wow. We can craft some next level stuff here. I planted my banana trees and planted those palms for logs for my new village. Finally, I swam back to begin building them walls. Boom. Beautiful. I built some walls separating the storage rooms. And when the storage room was kinda done, I began crafting paths to lay out through the whole village. I think it was a good idea deciding where the paths will go first instead of building the houses like I did last time. I built a tiny bridge, built a path where all our farms are gonna be, and built a city square type of thingy. Through the whole of day 50, I just built my road. And I was glad I was able to collect so much stone to our gameplay. Because going down again would be freaking tiring. Once that was done, I TP'd back for the next step of our village. But I opened my wood chest and noticed that we still didn't have any freaking palm logs. So I expanded my tree farm a tiny bit more. And while that grew, I grabbed my logs to make farm plots. I grabbed my seeds, swam back and began building the biggest farm I could freaking build. Missing flowers when you need them really sucks so I had to make sure that my farm was really fruitful. Alright, we're running out of that, so let's plant that wheat. There we go, there it is. Yeah, wheat is here. Potatoes. Okay, that's potatoes. Tomatoes here. Some flowers. And fire mores, yes. Onions. Pumpkins. I TP'd back to see that palm logs were still a problem, so I expanded my saplings even more. I collected the seeds that I hadn't planted yet, and there was a lot, and fitting them all in one farm was kinda hard. The trees were still super slow, so I decided sleeping for the day to pass the time. And surprisingly, unlike Minecraft, sleeping speeds up the growage of stuff. We had a beautiful forest, so I set my villagers to prioritize forestry, and went back to plant the rest of my seeds. I didn't have any more stone left, which I needed for the floor, so I went down to mine, but a raid was approaching. I took care of it and went to bed to get more wood. The villagers were hard at work of cutting those trees, so I took my guards and went to visit the caves to get more stone. I'm gonna build my floors from stone, so I really needed a lot. Luckily, I found some bombs, and those made the job a lot easier. I got that and TP'd home to find a pleasant surprise in my chest. Oh yes, a lot of palm logs, finally. I went back to the island to start building the houses for the farmers. I made one next to the river which is gonna be responsible for our crops, made another one which is gonna be responsible for animal keeping, and also made a yard for our animals. Next, realizing how much it sucks when you don't have wood, I made a forestry house which is gonna have a massive forest near it. With the farmhouses all done, we had to build more houses for regular people and guards. So a little bit closer to my home, I started building. I also wanted my guards to be in one place, so I built an apartment building with 6 rooms.
more houses for regular villagers. And once that was done, I deep it home to collect our wood and get ready for the next step, the furnishing. I also realized that I can make tungsten armor now, so I did that and it was quite freaking OP. I got back to my new village and furnished everything to the best of my ability. The villagers require their houses to have furniture or they become unhappy, so it was quite important. That took quite a while, but with this part finally done, we were pretty close to populating this village. I fenced my farm to make it look nicer, added windmills in the farmhouse so we can make bread, and finally removed my old settlement flag. I put it in my new village and I was kinda struggling with moving the villagers, they just straight up disappeared. I went to my old place to solve this problem and decided to rest for the night. I crafted a new settlement flag and put it down and that seemed to work. I moved all my villagers and finally assigned them jobs. I had to do the automation system again which kinda sucked, but I already had some knowledge on that so it didn't take as long. I planted a bunch of trees near the forestry house, let some animals into the cage and with the work assigned and everything planted the farm part of the village was done i went back to my old house to collect all the workstations and bring valuable stuff back we were getting closer to finally finishing this project and it was exciting i had to go back and forth for all the boss items and potions and on day 63 all there was left to do was decorate oh wow I placed a small water thingy in our city square and in my opinion it looked amazing. With the project done I needed to start getting ready for the future boss battles. So I built one more apartment building cause I'm gonna recruit a massive guard army to come with me. So like a chess player seeing a few steps ahead I did that. It was furnished and I recruited another villager. Not only housing I needed more ores for great armor too. My guards were gonna be as strong as me so I crafted some potions for the guards I had right now and went down into the deep caves. I found some ores like usual but I also found a boss spawn item which is great because my next goal is definitely that. I raided the massive dungeons and deep into the caves I found cave clothes which is basically a flower that allows us to make much more stronger healing potions. My inventory was getting filled with useful ores but of course like always we had to get interrupted by a raid, so I TP'd up and easily took care of that. Unfortunately, I noticed that the raiders killed one of my villagers, which kinda sucked. I planted the cave glows I found, and on day 68, I noticed that my villagers were a bit too slow to keep up with the massive farm, so I set a lot more people to work on that. Next, I took my potions and went to find some guards to recruit to start building my epic army. I did find a farmer on my way, so I hired him too. My farm really needed as much help as it could take. I also noticed a new class in the village a gunsmith and well it was selling hella crazy stuff i wanted to buy him but he needed ores so i quickly went home took what i had and the gunsmith was a part of my team i think i forgot that i needed guards so i tipped home and put my potions back kinda stupid of me on day 69 i hired a fisherman crafted some very strong bullets for newly acquired weapons and furnished a house for the fisherman to live in and i just walked around my city admiring how beautiful it is. And after that I finally remembered my mission so I quickly went to find more guards for my village. In the desert village I bought two guards. It's not a lot but it's a start. Back home I noticed that we were... <laughs> Back home, I noticed that we were already out of room and one of our guards didn't have a bed. So I... And now he had a bed. Day 71 and I think I finally fixed the farm problem. All my crops were getting harvested and with that I decided that it's the day I'm gonna fight the boss. I crafted potions, made better armor for my army and bought some pigs from the traveling merchant. I think though they were pretty useless but at least they look nice. With everything set and done it was time to take the boss item and go underground. Let's make sure there's no lava or anything. Alright, do we have a big space anywhere? Yeah, I think we have a big space there. Yeah, this is definitely the spot to do it. We can even throw some bombs and explode it some more. So we do have a ton of space to run around. Okay, there we go. A lot of space for us. Let's try and spawn this guy. Reaper. Let's see how difficult he is. Oh, damn. Okay, he is gonna be pretty difficult. I have to make sure to dodge his attacks. Okay. Survival is the number one priority here. Okay, this is not fun. I could possibly die here. Oh yeah, I might die. I need to watch out. Yeah. And he's still 8 HP. God damn. Okay, he's 70% done. Okay, if I keep doing this, this may be possible. Whew. 
Wow, I might die. I might freaking die. Please, guys, protect me. Oh, I'm so low. Okay, my guys are, are done. Oof, okay. They almost died, didn't they? My guards ran out of healing potions and they almost died. Damn. We're gonna need a ton of those then. I thought I fixed my farm, but I still didn't have any sunflowers. So I went back to my old base to get some and crafted as many health potions as I could. I fertilized my growing ones and went to sleep to speed it up. Okay, good. Have these grown? Yes, sir. All right, they better harvest these. We need a lot of sunflowers. There we go. They're harvesting those. Finally. I had a decent amount of potions now. I also made some life crystals to increase my health. I had to do everything in my power to increase the chances of my victory. So with everything ready, I went to try again. Without further ado, let's get to fighting. Okay, we have to keep our distance now. We're low HP. Okay, I think we got it. Already 70 HP down. Very nice. Okay, we need to dodge this guy. You died. Freak you. Defeated, I went back to get my items. This boss was much harder than the last one. And it's not even close to the final boss. This was gonna be hard. I went to sleep to grow my flowers. And on day 75, I realized that I'll need insane armor and a lot more guards to beat this thing. So I went to check out what Winter Deep Caves had to offer. Once I went down, I saw that I couldn't even break the stone with my current pickaxe. I also tried bombing it, but it provided no luck. I TP'd home to craft a new one. And now I was able to mine. There we go, something here. Hmm, Glacier Bar. Glacier Bar was a really strong ore. But of course, the raiders had to come to interrupt. With the peasants on my side, I defeated the raid and smelted my ores. And to speed up my flowers once again, I went to bed. Back in the caves, I found some new strawberry seeds and a new enemy, a ninja. Thankfully, with my guards on my side, no normal enemy was an obstacle. And I was actually finally able to kill the running guy. In this cave, they dropped glacier ores, which was really good. Spending my time in the cave, I found a lot of ores, especially at decent amount of glacier ores, which made amazing armor and weapons. And with my pockets filled with that, I TP'd home to smelt. I noticed that my farm was lacking once again, so I decided to build one more, which was much closer to my house. I needed a freaking ton of sunflowers and wasn't just gonna sit around and wait for it. I went to sleep to speed it up, and all I did for the next few days was getting ready for the boss. Crafting armor, potions, and all the boring stuff. But finally, with everything in place, I went to try again. Let's give this to you. You can use this. And let's spawn this freaker. Time to win. Damn, this is a good sword. Okay, let's not get too comfortable. Bit by bit, we're gonna destroy this freaker. Okay, I think it's much easier now. We're halfway there. Now I have to survive, because I'm low. Oof, damn, let's dodge this. Okay. Okay, not too much HP left for that guy. 2000 HP only. Please, let me survive this. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and like that, the Reaper boss has just declared war. I knew that I could take him. I still had a nice amount of potions and I was pretty strong myself. All I needed was numbers. So this time, I recruited my regular villagers to fight as well. Let's freaking go. We have so many people with us. This is gonna be insane. I'm guessing a lot of people are gonna die. And please let me win this time. I really wanna win. Let's get it. Let's get it, boys. Come on. 12% HP. Okay, it's war throws. We have to dodge those. We have to. Boom. Okay, those are dodged. Okay, now it's getting kind of dangerous. But we can drink a potion at any time. 3% HP. I think we got it. Okay, these cannonballs or whatever these are. Come on now. He's very low. Please die. Oh. What we get? Shadow beam. That's it? Okay, well, what does this do? Oh, 
finally boys we did it although i won i suffered some casualties and a few of my villagers died so i quickly went to a different settlement to replace them on day 86 i made sure that my pigs were still useless bought a villager defeated a raid and went to bed now with only 13 days left i had to hurry to get ready for the final boss so like usual i mainly focused on making potions i was always short on them and it was starting to get on my nerves next on my way to get the boss spawn item from the desert i met this ostrich guy i killed him and he dropped a feather and when used this happened <laughs> what we can ride an ostrich this is insane. Yep, I had a pet that I could ride on. And he was pretty freaking fast. Anyway, I went down and pretty soon in a chest, I found it. The next boss item. Now what I've heard about it is that it's insanely difficult. So with only a few days left, I had to get ready as best I could. I raided this desert dungeon and found a new class I could hire. An explorer. Although I didn't have what he asked for. So I'm gonna hire him next time. I kept exploring and found a secret underground door. And when I entered, I found a massive gold stash. Only problem was, it was guarded by traps. Basically, I had to step on those pressure plates correctly or I get shot at. So I told my team to go home because they are stupid NPCs. PCs, and while taking pictures of my screen, I beat it. I entered the main loot room and found some insane weapons. These rifles deal a great amount of damage and I'm definitely using that against the boss. I TP'd home, took my guards and mined some more ores for the armor I'm gonna give to my new guards. Speaking of new guards, I TP'd home and found one in my base and gladly hired him. To expand my team, I had to build more rooms again, so I did that. I assigned them beds and went home, I finally crafted some tungsten armor for myself. At the moment, I thought it was the highest tier. I also made sure my guards had really good armor as well. And some of my boys didn't have the best. So on days 91 to 93, I raided the swamp and snow deep caves because I thought they had the best ores. On day 94, I recruited another guard. And on day 95, I crafted myself my psyllium armor, which I realized was actually better than tungsten. I put down a chest to store my boss items that I'm gonna give to my guards. And we already had a few sets of pretty good armor for them. On day 96, I added a few more rooms and hired a few more guards. On day 97, I mined some more ores and crafted some more armor for the fight. I also decided that the strategy I'm gonna go with is basically making my guards a SWAT team. I'm just gonna give them pretty good weapons so they can keep their distance. Day 98, I tested my new weapons on a lower tier boss that I haven't beaten yet. It was pretty easy. Or my weapons were pretty great. I wasn't sure. Day 99, I equipped all my guards with the stored armor I managed to craft and my team was was looking pretty clean and on day 100 i finally went to beat the boss Ooh, there we go we found it i am potioned up and let's just try and get this we're gonna try and attack this dragon we have to stay really focused to not get hurt here we just have to dodge not that difficult is it only dodging my job is to dodge their job is to attack shouldn't be too e shouldn't be too hit difficult it's hard to talk, shoot, and dodge at the same time, not gonna lie. But hey, that's my job. Nah, you ain't touching me, boys. I'm the mob. Never late, boys. You can never touch me, man. This circle, easy to dodge. Let's go. There we go. Okay, we can attack again. Wait, that's the wrong weapon. Nah, you ain't touching me, my guys. Never. Ne okay. <laughs> they did. They just did. Okay, good. Let's get this. Boom. I have to dodge. Like, I must dodge every single one now. I wish they could... Yes, they're circling me. Good. Dodge this laser, please. Never late. Yes. Okay. Please drink the freaking potion. Okay, I drank the potion. I still may die here. Activate it. Okay. Wow, this is crazy. Uh, drink. Yeah? Holy smokes, that was insane. I won. And I actually realized that this one wasn't the final. A door opened revealing the actual final boss. So if you'd like to see that, smash like and subscribe. Hope you enjoyed and have a great day, my guys.